ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you for attending this. My name is Roy Edgington. I've had the privilege of being the mayor for the last 11 years for the city of Fernley. First, I want to thank DeCunic for hosting the VIP and for uh, Mark Four. Mr. Secretary, I appreciate your call last week uh, prior to your visit, and thank you for coming and visiting the city of Fernley. Our community welcomes you. Please give a round of applause. My staff says I have to follow the thing because I only get three minutes, so bear with me. Under my leadership over the past several years, the city staff has been working closely with Mark IV Capital on funding options for the Nevada Pacific Parkway Extension Project. And we are very happy to see this project move forward. The RAISE grant represents the largest, largest single grant awarded in the history of the city of Fernley. Today, with us, With us today is Mark Ford Capital CEO, Paul Gates. Thank you for attending and, and please give him a round of applause. They came to us a few years ago. They bought this industrial park. It had been sitting for almost 15 years with nothing new and they've made a big change. So this will help. We appreciate this. This is a great example of how a public private partnership can work and move large projects uh, when working together. This project will relieve traffic congestion by providing another alternative road way across the Union Pacific lines that are behind us and will act as a catalyst in the creation of more than 10,000 jobs we hope to see in this Victory Logistics Park. I can't be more proud of the city team and of our partnership with Capital, Mark IV Capital. Again, multiple agencies help make this happen and I, I It'd be a long list, so I want to thank everybody, though. I want to extend a sincere thanks to you and to everyone who played a role in this process. I'd also like to thank our partners in the Nevada Department of Transportation, Lyon County, I know it's here, and a, and a special thanks to the Nevada Congressional Delegates and Secretary Buttigieg for being here today. On a personal note, you never usually talk to somebody 10 or 15 pay grades above you and being the mayor of Fernley and a buck and a half will buy you a cup of coffee at McDonald's. I want to thank you for making me at ease talking to you. I was really nervous. <laughs> but then I found out you've been there too <laughs> and the only difference between one city and the other is how many zeros go on to check to fix the potholes. So thank you sir for being so uh, personable. Our next speaker will be Cody Wagner. Cody. Good morning and welcome. My name is Cody Wagner. Uh, at the city level, I'm just a lowly planning commissioner, but uh, I'm a longtime resident of Fernley and have served as the chair of the Fernley Community Foundation for the past five years. I'll begin this morning by thanking the mayor for his comments and appreciating the city of Fernley for considering me for this opportunity to speak on behalf of the residents of our incredible community. My family and I moved here way back in 1987 when I was two years old. The Fernley I knew was a small rural community of about 5,000 people. In those days, Fernley embodied the typical tight-knit American culture where everyone knew and looked after everyone else, especially our youth. Teachers knew you and your parents, and you could bet that any trouble at school meant your parents already knew about it before you even got home. As Fernley started growing in my high school years during the late 90s and early 2000s, the culture started to change. More employment opportunities and increased economic activity also led to more traffic and increased cost of living. The explosive growth also caused Fernley to be one of the hardest hit communities in our country during the economic downturn and housing crisis in 2008. And unfortunately for our residents, this increased population did not bring much improvement in community amenities. Many of the parks, schools, extracurricular opportunities, and transportation corridors that I grew up with and were built for that small community of 5,000 people are now still in place trying to accommodate 25,000 people or more. Which leads us to today and why this investment in Fernley is so important. If you've ever hit the infamous Fernley roundabout about 5 p.m., I don't need to tell you what the eventual extension of Nevada Pacific Parkway means. You already know. 
Beyond easing rush hour traffic, this also signals strategic investment in economic diversification and greater access to improved supply chains throughout our northern Nevada region. On a deeper level, the investment signifies that you care about our community and the quality of life for our residents. As Fernley hits this next stage of growth, we need other developers and businesses who will support our community and show that you care by investing in schools, parks, roads, and other needed infrastructure to raise Fernley up. We also need to work on a tax revenue structure for our city that can sustain those improvements for our future. I'll conclude today by thanking Mark Four and Secretary Buttigieg and his staff for showing your commitment to our community and jumpstarting our future as a growing city with the announcement today. Next in our speaker lineup for this morning, I'd like to welcome Nelson Araujo, Infrastructure Advisor to the Governor. Thank you. Good morning. It's a great day to be in Fernley. We've got some amazing weather that has welcomed us and it's a, a wonderful day to be surrounded with so many leaders to talk about my favorite topic, infrastructure. Uh, my name is Nelson Araujo and I serve as Nevada Governor Steve Sisolak's infrastructure advisor. I wanna begin by recognizing the leadership in, here in Fernley, especially Mayor Edgington. Without their foresight and dedication to their community, we would not be here today. As mentioned, the Victory Project, will com which will complete the Nevada Pacific, connect, uh, Pacific Parkway connection from I-80 to Highway 50, will help increase supply chain efficiency and ultimately lower cost of goods for Nevadans. Folks, this is a huge deal. We have been asking for this for such a long time, and thanks to you, Secretary Buttigieg, and the entire Department of Transportation and Nevada's congressional leadership, uh, we are now seeing this become a reality for the city of Fernley. So a big round of applause to the champions that have made this possible. <laughs> Advancing our infrastructure is a critical priority in the state of Nevada. That's why in 2021, Governor Sisolak helped start the Nevada State Infrastructure Bank with a $75 million investment. It's why, after the bipartisan infrastructure law was passed, he created a special sub-cabinet of advisors to ensure Nevada builds off of the opportunities provided through the newly available federal funds. And it's why, next month in September, he's holding the first ever Nevada Infrastructure Summit um, here, and we're gonna have great robust conversations about how we're going to build uh, and sustain infrastructure for generations to come. We know that infrastructure investments help create good paying jobs and careers for Nevadans and ultimately help improve our quality of life. These infrastructure dollars are critical to fixing our roads, bridges, and so much more. And it is thanks to these historical federal investments that we will improve Nevada's infrastructures for multiple generations. Before I close, I want to express to you that the governor wishes he could be here. Uh, he is extremely, extremely proud of all of the great work that's happening in the state of Nevada, he is excited about all, about all of the future opportunities, and again, is eternally grateful to the Department of Transportation for thinking of Nevada, for investing in Nevada, and for supporting the lives of Nevadans. With that, I would love to welcome to the stage Under Secretary of Transportation, Carlos Monge. Good morning. Uh, I'm so glad to be with you in Fernley. Uh, it is a day to celebrate. First, uh, we should celebrate the fact that the city of Fernley, the state of Nevada, and Mark IV Capital had the foresight to understand that this spot where we're standing was a perfect place to build out an inland port. Straddling major highways, cross country rail lines, 80% of major markets in 11 western states are just an overnight trip away. These leaders figured if they could make key investments in rail and road right here, it could mean more than 7,000 jobs and more than $1.5 billion, with a B, in industrial development for this area. Then these partners, led by Mayor Edgington, Governor Sisolak, had the audacity to make those plans a reality, with state and private sector investments and with an incredibly strong application to the highly selective and very prestigious RAISE pro grant program. Which brings me to the second reason to celebrate, the fact that this year we actually had the resources to make more incredible projects like this one and take them from the wish list to the construction schedule. The 
Raise program more than doubled since last year because of the bipartisan infrastructure law. This is a law that President Biden championed, that Secretary Buttigieg barnstormed the country to build support for, and that would not have been possible without the leadership of Senators Cortez Masto and Rosen and Representatives Titus, Lee, and Horsford. Because of their support, Ray's grew from $1 billion a year to $2.2 billion this year. The bipartisan infrastructure law has more money for roads since the creation of the, infra- of the interstate system, more money for rail since the creation of Amtrak, and the most money for transit ever. The bill gives us unprecedented tools to make our transportation system safer, cleaner, more equitable, and efficient, and to finally, finally give this great nation the infrastructure we need and deserve. Another reason to celebrate is the fact that earlier this month, President Biden signed into law the Inflation Reduction Act, which is a victory for lowering costs for families, combating the climate crisis, reducing the deficit, and making the largest corporations finally pay their their fair share. The law also includes, selfishly for US DOT, additional resources for us to continue our momentum, reconnecting communities divided by legacy infrastructure, and by investing in lower carbon building materials and sustainable aviation fuels. Finally, we can celebrate because we are at a special moment for infrastructure, not only because we have more resources and tools than ever before, but also because we have a leader at the Department of Transportation like Secretary Pete. As a former mayor himself, Secretary Buttigieg appreciates the crucial and hard work it takes to get a project like this off the ground and into reality. His advocacy paved the way for this legislation, and he has the ability to paint a picture of the better outcomes that Americans can and should expect from their infrastructure investments. Shorter and more reliable commutes, the ability for American businesses to efficiently send their goods across the country and around the world, less air pollution, fewer injuries on the road, and more opportunities for disadvantaged families. It's my great pleasure to introduce my boss, Secretary Buttigieg. Thank you so much. First of all, thank you, Carlos, uh, a terrific leader in the U.S. Department of Transportation and a great colleague. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, the mayor for that warm welcome, and uh, uh, you're right, mayor. Fellow mayors, I think, have that famous uh, experience of mayor versus pothole, and that's true whether you're in the desert or whether you're in the uh, industrial Midwest where I come from. And uh, my hope is that mayors like you uh, feel a a new wind at your back with the federal support that we're trying to provide, uh, knowing that the job has only become more demanding since, since I wore the title. Uh, but I'm so impressed uh, with, uh, even in my short time on the ground here, what I see in the civic pride, the commitment, and the teamwork that you uh, and your colleagues in local leadership bring. And, and that's part of why you've succeeded in this very, very competitive program. And I'll have a little more to say about that in a moment. Uh, I want to uh, thank Nelson and uh, uh, please uh, thank the governor uh, for us. Uh, great to see you. And, and uh, Nevadans are fortunate to have a governor who recognizes the importance of infrastructure and is making those investments that now, at long last, are being met and matched uh, by federal investments, too. Uh, Cody, thank you for sharing the, the story of the community here, too. Where I come from, a lot of people would look at fast population growth as a good problem to have, but it is a challenge nonetheless that puts enormous strain on infrastructure that was not built to support the kind of growth that's happening. And of course, that's part of what we're talking about uh, addressing today. And we are so thankful for the work of uh, Senator Cortez Masto, uh, Senator Rosen, uh, and the House delegation who did so much to support the funding that we are now able to bring in very real form to projects like this. A big part of the reason why this is possible. And we're here with a spring in our step because we've had so much good news in recent weeks, uh, including that Inflation Reduction Act that's going to lower prescription drug costs, make health insurance more affordable, and help families uh, save money on their uh, utility uh, bills through more energy-efficient uh, homes, something that I know our hosts here at DeCunic know a thing or two about. And thank you for, for having us over here as well. One of the things I'm I'm most thrilled about our moment is that we get to say yes more often to good ideas. But again, I want to make sure that that you all know just how competitive of a program this was. We got $13 billion of applications for about $2 billion in this year's round of funding. So the projects that made the cut are ones that really, really stood out. And you've got a lot to be proud of here. In recent years, this area of northern Nevada uh, looked at the geography here, uh, the the people and businesses, and found a unique strength in the intersection of transportation, 
and warehousing and manufacturing, attracting this Victory Logistics uh, District Industrial Park, which has already been a, a win for people in this region. Uh, but of course, to make the most of a logistics district, you need good transportation infrastructure, the right roads for trucks, the right connections for freight trains. And that's why this project is so vital. The city of Fernley, with support from the governor and in partnership with the uh, private sector partners behind this industrial park have committed much of the funding that is needed to improve the roads and rail around this industrial park. You have put your money where your mouth is and then applied for federal funds to help get this project over the finish line. So today I am just beyond delighted to be with you in person to celebrate that we are awarding $25 million to build out this transportation infrastructure supporting the Victory Logistics Industrial Park. And it's expected to grow. The transportation improvements that we're delivering here, the economic development that this is going to bring will create thousands of jobs in construction, logistics, and manufacturing across northern Nevada. And in every state in the country right now, from, from rural areas to suburbs to cities, through these raised grants, people will see benefits from improved transportation infrastructure. Uh, it, it's something that, uh, uh, that is based on the philosophy uh, that, that guides this entire program, uh, that the ideas, the plans, the, the designs, the, the programs, uh, they're not all going to come from Washington, but more of the funding should, and that's where we can come in. You have shown that when a community steps forward uh, with good ideas and a shared sense of purpose, that yields uh, even more resources that in turn are going to lead to that public-private growth. And, and this is part of uh, 166 projects just in this announcement alone uh, that are going to, uh, we think, improve everything from daily commutes to uh, our supply chains uh, to our international competitiveness. So here we're going to help complete the Nevada Pacific Parkway connection from I-80 to Highway 50 with industrial access to this site. We're going to create an inland port where you can move containers between rail, truck, and warehouse with additional rail capacity and access to both the Union Pacific Railroad and the Burlington Northern Santa Fe lines. And the benefits are, are going to be felt not just at this site, uh, but across the whole region. The dairies in, in Fallon. The, the mines near Yarrington, Nevada. Hope I'm saying that right, Yarrington. Um, uh, so many different communities can see lower shipping costs because of these rail improvements. And lower shipping costs matter at a moment when we are fighting inflation with everything that we've got. But it's especially meaningful for our supply chains. You know, if you get onto I-80 and you drive about uh, 2,000 miles uh, to the east and then take two right turns, you'll get to the house I grew up in. Uh, and uh, we know this is going to mean a lot to people who drive on those roads. But it's going to mean a lot to people who uh, don't even know uh, that this industrial park is here. Because when you have those lower shipping costs, it means that the costs on uh, everybody's budgets, the cost of the goods on everyone's shelves, come down. We're also going to improve local roads, including providing separated bike lines, lanes so that residents can more safely and efficiently travel through their community as it's growing. Uh, and again, uh, I think that growth around here is just beginning. So we're, we're delighted uh, to be part of this. And, uh, uh, and this is coming in the middle of a tour that's taking us through just a handful of the successful applicants. We started yesterday in, uh, in Tampa, uh, where we're adding port capacity for a new berth there to accommodate bigger ships. Uh, we went into Tulsa, where uh, uh, their, uh, their road 51st Street just stops dead at a highway that goes right in between them. We're finally going to reconnect that back up. And now we're here, where surprisingly, this is the coolest and most uh, comfortable uh, weather we've been in. Um, <laughs> Uh, somebody showed me the forecast, said 106, but feels like 98. And I thought, well, I guess that's a wind chill uh, at, at 98. It's that dry heat you've been warning us about. Uh, and we're so pleased to be here. Uh, you know, also uh, in, in this state, in, in Nevada, we're in Las Vegas, we're funding multiple miles of what are called complete streets, making those roads safer and more comfortable for people, whether you're driving or uh, uh, walking, uh, biking, using a wheelchair, however you're getting around. Uh, in, in Louisiana, we're fixing a, and replacing a dilapidated pontoon bridge. We're going to save people about half of their travel time. In Washington State, they've got a ferry uh, that is in such bad shape it damages the cars uh, that use it. And we're going to be able to fix that. So uh, we're doing so many great things around the country, but this is among uh, the best examples, I think, uh, of what this vision for building a better America looks like. 
and why we are so enthusiastic about the partnership that is going to get things done. So again, mayor, as a mayor who once uh, knocked on the doors of the U.S. Department of Transportation uh, trying to get support for my community, I want to congratulate you and everybody who's here. I want to thank the senators for their support and let you know that, uh, like any mayor, the, the only thing I love more uh, than a, a groundbreaking or an award announcement or a big check uh, is uh, that day you get to get out the ribbon cutting scissors and celebrate the completed project. And so we'll be watching closely to see this project come to completion. Thanks again. Congratulations. And just such a pleasure to be with you all. All right. Um, I think we have a bit of time for uh, media questions. Uh, who's going to quarterback that for us? Alexandria? Oh, there we are. Okay, great. Well, you know, more than once when I was mayor, I was trying to get the uh, attention of the U.S. DOT. Often it was on a regulatory matter. But the idea that $25 million would have come to a community, certainly of my size, and, and South Bend was, I think, a little larger than, than, than Fernley, that would have been a huge deal for us. Uh, so I know how exciting it is to get that good news. But also as a former mayor, I know that uh, you don't just wake up one day and get a happy call from the Secretary of Transportation. Uh, it, it really requires so much coordination, partnership, uh, and it's it's a family thing, right? I'm sure there were some uh, there were some tricky conversations on how to get things right uh, within the family before coming in on a united basis uh, uh, to the the uh, federal side uh, looking for support. Uh, but it really reflects great credit on this community uh, that in a in such a competitive round. We got almost a thousand applications uh, that this is one of the ones that made the cut. Yeah, so uh, part of how a project stands out is if it meets the moment. And what you have in this moment for this region in Nevada is a lot of population growth, an enormous amount of potential, but physical infrastructure that has strained to keep up. And also, uh, we have this moment where we're paying attention uh, as a country, as a, as a public, I think, more than ever before to supply chains. Now, I, I know uh, uh, there's a bit of a chuckle from folks in, in uh, transportation, warehousing, logistics, uh, that everybody suddenly discovered what a supply chain was and why it mattered so much, because a lot of people here uh, have been working on this their whole careers. Uh, but it's something that now the public is paying more attention to, because it turns out if there is any link any, uh, that is inefficient, if there is any gap, the whole country feels it. It will make a difference to, to my uh, hometown in Indiana. Uh, that there is better transportation infrastructure in Nevada. Everything is linked together. And while when people think about ports, they probably tend to think more of places like where I was standing yesterday in Florida with a big ship behind me, uh, this is part of what ports look like too. An inland port matters just as much. So the applicants demonstrated that, demonstrated the readiness to uh, bring their own uh, funds to, to be part of that answer, uh, to match those $25 million uh, that are coming in in that federal piece. Uh, and all of those are things that help this project rise to the top of that list. So uh, I'll refer you to our, our local partners for more of the details on project delivery. Obviously, the sooner the better, but this is taxpayer money we're talking about. Of course, it's got to go through a careful uh, process to make sure everything goes right. But uh, look, we see the need, we see the growth, we see the demand. Uh, the sooner, like I said, the sooner we can be sharpening those ribbon cutting scissors, the better. Yeah, I'm certainly having some flashbacks to my earlier visits to, to Nevada during the campaign season. And, uh, of course, one of the things I got to know was uh – uh, was uh, uh, the North. Everybody, you know, more people know about Las Vegas than, than uh, uh, what the dynamics are, are here in, in northern Nevada. I just ran into somebody who I saw at an event in Sparks and was thinking about uh, the community there. Uh, and you, you've got uh, a lot of folks here who have been, uh, on one hand, left out of some of those economic stories uh, that have come to other regions. And on the other hand, uh, have some of the best growth potential, I believe, of any place in the country. Uh, so being able to see that is great. But also, you know, then, uh, of course, it was more of a, a political capacity that I was in. Uh, one more thing I love about being here today is I don't even know the many people I had wonderful conversations with just now. I 
don't know who's a Democrat or who's a Republican in that group. Uh, I just know that people care about their community and we're proud to be partnering to get something done. All right. Thanks again. Congratulations to the community and uh, look forward to keeping up on this project.